Shanna Mallon. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to 15 and 15. I'm Hannah Mallon. I work for the CoLab uh, as learning uh, advisor and developer. And um, today I'm going to be talking about the concept of sense of belonging, um, specifically at a university setting. And the impetus for this was kind of based on um, Robin's uh, strategic plan alignment module of Design Forward that she created, where she um, investigated some interventions for persistence um, at the college level. And one of those is sense of belonging. And I really wanted to kind of explore it a little bit more um, in this 15 minutes and, and talk about what I found. So a sense of belonging um, requires a sense of affiliation and identification with a community. So um, not just that you are, you know, uh, associated with the community, but that it is an integral part of your identity. Um, and sense of belonging at the college level can be defined as this psychological sense that one is va a valued member of the college community. So I think that affiliation and that identification comes from the um, evidence that you are a valued member um, of the college community. It's not just that you are a member, but you are valued by the people around it, around you. And so um, one kind of um, um, resource that I was looking at, which is the IO, Iowa State Center for um, Teaching and Learning, they have put together a really great resource all about sense of belonging. And I've kind of taken the pieces that I really like, and I've also collabified some of them as well. So um, they, they talk about how a uh, sense of belonging is related to this cognition, affect, and behaviors. So otherwise, um, this can also kind of be known as the students can think about how they belong, they feel like they belong, and as a result, they act like they belong. So we're really talking about um, the behaviors, um, th that behavior part, that doesn't come until students think and feel like they belong. And so those behaviors um, come about in, in ways that we can kind of see as evidence of them engaging in class. So they show up to class, they communicate with their professor if they're unable to show up to class or if they're struggling in class. Um, and they complete their work. So these are just some ways that we see the evidence of students feeling like they belong. Um, and a, a study that I uh, took a look at by Cohen and Walton um, looked at the uh, persistence rate specifically for people of color um, and in particular African Americans. And it was found to be a, a, a lever where these targeted interventions can have consequences that lessen inequalities in both achievement and health. So there are two courts of, of students, um, both white and African-American. They um, had these interventions early on where really, really simply social adversity was framed for them as shared. So um, they had a sense of community that everybody faced some sort of social adversity and that it was short-lived or temporary. And so very simple um, um, intervention here to kind of promote a growth mindset essentially and to show that students that this, um, that social adversity was short-lived and temporary. And um, they also framed it that these were not fixed deficits in the students themselves, um, but they were normal to the college experience normal to the adjustment process. Um, and as a result, they, they studied these students later on as well after these interventions, um, and they were found to um, have some great impacts. So persistence rates were greater in those students that kind of uh, received this message. GPAs were higher. Um, students actually uh, self-reported less uh, stress and illness. Um, and they even reported that they were that, that they were happier. And this was a really kind of simple intervention that was um, kind of brought to them very early on in their college in their college experience. And uh, students also had to make messages for future students. Um, kind of, they were told that students would also be put into these inter, uh, into these groups where they talked about social adversity. And so one of the things that they had to do is make resources for future students with the same exact message. And uh, the study really found that that was integral to them really internalizing that message and also making them feel part of a group that also 
was going to go on and support future students as well. So I think we can take lots of um, uh, lessons from, from that one uh, report, and there are many, many reports like this as well. Um, one of the things that they also discuss is that a sense of belonging is dynamic and changeable. So um, students, even though they had these interventions, they um, did report different levels of belonging throughout their time um, at, in college. So one of the takeaways that I take from this is that it's really important to integrate this in every single class that we're teaching, every single experience that we have supporting students and communicating with students because it's such a changeable message, even if they feel like they really belong in one class, they might go into five other classes the next semester that um, don't make them feel quite as much like they belong. And so that sense of belonging um, is off kilter that semester. So I think it's really important to always kind of consider a sense of belonging when um, you know, planning out a class, when designing a class, but also uh, for folks who supervise uh, student workers as well, or um, you know, folks who are in student support uh, programs. Uh, just every time that we communicate with a student, we can kind of keep this in mind and we can make little moves and changes to um, you know, ensure that students kind of feel that sense of belonging all throughout their, their time at university. And so um, I took a resource, a really wonderful resource that that um, Iowa State University Center for Teaching and Learning put together and I've collabified it um, because we always have to have our fun little take on things as well. So they have a really fantastic list of tangible small moves that can be made, especially in a classroom setting to help students sense of belonging and I have kind of uh shaped it a little bit to be this potluck model um so when we think of a potluck we think of uh folks coming together maybe from different identities they're bringing their different types of foods their different um ethnic backgrounds and they're celebrated they're part of the table everyone has a seat and we really celebrate this variety in the foods and the experiences that these people that people can bring to the table um, and so my first kind of strategy um, as a whole is the fact that at a potluck, everyone has a seat at the table. And so Iowa State University has put together, you know, these, these small little moves that you can make in a classroom or when you interact with students to help them with their sense of belonging. So, you know, things like learn and, and use students' names and pronouns. Um, Robin also kind of reported on this uh, in her um, own 15 and 15, where this was one of the moves that a university did to really help with retention and persistence rates. It's just this the simple fact that if students um, feel like their professor or the people that they're interacting with at college know their name, pronounce it correctly, um, and respect their pronouns, that that can really help with their sense of belonging. And it's such a small move that we can all make um, in order to really help students feel, feel, think, feel, and behave as though they belong. Um, prior to, prioritizing student learning needs over coverage, um, that one is very much related to the idea that um, even if you have to pause, you have to uh, go back over content, you notice that lots of students in the class maybe did not get a particular unit and that you need to stop and check in with them and go over things again. Um, prioritizing that instead of moving through the content that you feel like you need to cover, that can also help a student's sense of belonging. So they feel like they are part of the community and that they matter and that their learning matters instead of just getting you know the the list of content that the instructor or um you know whatever bodies that are kind of controlling the content that we that we teach in various classes um prioritize um another kind of strategy that i picked out from that resource is that everyone helps set the table um at a potluck and this is really um, all about integrating students into the design of your classroom um, and making them a part of the 
um, methods that you use to teach them. So creating opportunities for students to provide feedback on um, your own design of the classroom, their own learning experiences, you know, asking them to fill little surveys at the six week grade mark or so that they can feel like that they're a part of the community and that they can um, reflect on how they're learning and what changes can be made to the environment in order to help them learn better. Um, and this one that I really love, developing a group charter for class interactions. I did this in my own tackling a wicked problem class this semester. I should have put it in here because I love the charter that they came up with. I'm happy to share that. Um, but it was, it's all about how they want to be prepared for class and what that looks like, um, their interactions with each other. And even they talked about the um, respect of the content and us, uh, it, it, when people share in the classroom and how that takes vulnerability. Um, so they came up with some really incredible things and they, I feel as though a charter helps that sense of community because they're building the expectations and interactions that might take place in that classroom community instead of having to kind of walk on eggshells and learn how it might go in a classroom. They're involved with that process right at the beginning. Um, at a potluck, we va uh, value variety. And so um, these moves are related to uh, the different contexts that students bring to the table um, and how those um, can be integrated into the um, learning environment. So uh, assessing students' prior knowledge or um, having students call upon that prior knowledge and, and reflect on it and how it's going to shape their learning in the classroom. Um, highlighting the diversities of uh, the diversity of um, contributors to your discipline. So making sure that you are including a wide variety of voices um, and you are demonstrating how um, people in the fields come from different backgrounds and they bring their own important contexts to the table, just like this, your students do. Um, and creating a process for students to discuss their own strengths, their own personal learning goals um, why are they taking this class? Why are they at college? Why are in the major? Why are they in the major that they're in? What are their own personal learning goals? And trying to kind of integrate that in, in the class as well. Um, and a little note while I'm talking about all of these, um, these are a lot, and uh, a lot of them are a lot of work too. So I really encourage folks to choose, you know, two or three um, to understand that this is a journey that you can make little moves here and there. Um, the important thing is that sense of belonging is kind of considered when you are designing assignments and designing your learning um, environments. So you can make two or three little moves um, to kind of uh, help students feel like they're part of a community. And the very last kind of strategy in the potluck um, model here is that no one leaves hungry. Um, this does not mean that uh, I'm encouraging folks to uh, actually feed <laughs> their their students, but um, one of the one of the ways that students feel a sense of belonging is that they feel like their needs are being met. Um, and we talk about this in the collab a lot that students are humans first, um, and that they need their basic needs taken care of. So. Uh, it goes a long way for students to feel like they belong if they see that their professor cares about their basic needs. So being an ambassador for student resources and supports, um, communicating concern for your students well being. So when they email you about being sick um, before you go in and talk about how they can make up the work, um, starting with. Oh my gosh, I hope you're I, I hope you're feeling better. I hope you feel better soon. That can go a long way for students to feel that sense of a sense of belonging and feel like they're cared for um, and designing pathways for students um, if they need to be absent or turn or uh, giving them the ability to turn work in late or leave class early, etc. So all of these um, to kind of recognize that students are humans, they're going through things outside of the classroom and that you are you are there to support them um, in their journey. Uh, and their transition um, sometimes when you're teaching first year students like I am and tackling a wicked problem um, into being a student, a full time student. And we're right at the 15 minute mark. So Thank I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> so much, Hannah. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.